Jennifer to unmute me. It was either Catholic or finance. It looked like maybe the Catholic. Thing. Can you, uh, one of you, ask Jennifer to unmute me so I can test if I can talk? Oh, you want me to just text her? Just call. Just talk to her. Jennifer, can you unmute Jane? You're unmuted. Hello, testing, testing. Okay. Are we going to wait a couple minutes for Amy or? She's no. not coming. Oh, she's on. She'll be coming on Zoom, she's right? It's six o'clock. Let's start. She'll jump in. Okay. I am calling the De the January fourth meeting of the Hadley Select Board to order. If there's anybody recording this meeting, please let me know. Otherwise, the meeting is being recorded by. Hadley Media and the Hadley Select Board Office via this Zoom meeting. Hearing no one recording, please note that in the minutes. Okay, we're going to change the agenda slightly and start with the Hadley Business Council formation. Molly, you want to go to that? Um, sure. Can I, can I just make sure, is it, can everyone hear us? Yep. Just wanted to see if we could get this quickly on the agenda. <clears throat> um, so uh, the idea behind the formation of the Hadley Business Council um, is that it would be an independent group um, <clears throat> made up of business owners. Um, Kind of the genesis of this was some conversations for uh, several of us who are happen to be members of the Amherst Area Chamber, although that's not a requirement, um, <clears throat> but wanting to have um, a voice and also act as a sounding board so that um, when there are various initiatives or changes that the town might be comp uh, contemplating in terms of policies um, that would have an, an impact on the business community, um, just so that on the town side, we would know that this group existed, so it would be um, just kind of eyes and ears that we could tap into. And uh, primary goal is really to also improve communication with the business community. So um, through the chamber, um, as an example, we have uh, the chamber has a great communication mechanism in place to get the word out on different things. So the plastic bag um, issue being a good good one uh, that just came up this past week. So the Board of Health is able to leverage uh, the chamber. And again, that information kind of flowed through us informally. So uh, we're just looking to formalize that. And Kishor, you want to speak to it? Yes. Yeah, so support role do you see the select board playing, if any? Um, uh, legitimizing it in a certain way, I guess. I mean, just the mere fact that the select board, if, if uh, let's say that the council had an issue that they wanted to bring forward, um, that you would give us audience um, would be one way. And then uh, from a communication standpoint, certainly making sure that if there are things that are being discussed, whether it's through the inspections department or, or here or the, the bylaw committee, that that information is being brought to this business council for discussion so that, um, you know, as a town, we'll be better by getting feedback before something happens instead of after, after the, the fact. fact. After the fact, feedback's always wonderful, <laughs> um, but it's not always the best feedback. So in actuality, um, we certainly have a lot more businesses in town than Amherst does. Uh, we're a little bit more thriving in businesses than Amherst. 
um, I would think that, and I never understood why our businesses always went over to Amherst where we had so many here, why didn't we have our own chamber? Why didn't we have our own group? And I think this is a good start to it. And I think that, um, you know, in order for us to have a better communication, this is, you know, a way of starting to do that. Um, so I would rather, I would like us to be our own where we would, you know, make rules and regulations and everything that we do anyway in the town really affects the businesses here in Hadley. Um, and, and having that communication with people, I think, is a lot better than not having it. When I was a business owner back in the 90s, there were several attempts, well, from 90s to, to 10, there were several attempts to have a business association. And my sense was there really wasn't anybody willing to step up for leadership. Who, who where, where did it go or where did it, it they start? Would have, or they would have groups. They would invite everybody who owned a Hadley business. We'd get together. We'd have a meeting. And it would fizzle. My standpoint, I think things have changed um, from back then. I think the businesses here, the ones that have been here for a long time, like ours, have grown. And we have some more established businesses than there was. Um, so I don't see that per se as being a problem. Good. Life, but, um, you know, the, the latest example I could give you right now is just the Route 9 expansion of how many businesses individually have issues with it, but they don't come together. And it is an issue. There's yeah. no denying that. Mm -hmm. well, it's I, whether this starts out small and stays small or starts out small and grows, one way or the other, I think it's, it's a good thing to have, as Molly said, a, a voice in the community to, to help get things out and a place to talk to and then a, you know, a, a centralized group to bring it back to us if need be so I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, it all starts, too, with um, people that are responsible for our, our building committee and our buildings and things like that, where people want to start up businesses. It's the building inspector, the electrical, the fire, the, um, you know, everybody that is involved with the startup of a company. And they, that process starts at town hall when they take out a permit and then proceeds, they usually get their information from Town Hall on how to go about setting up their business. So there might be, you know, an avenue of where we could, you know, tap into them too about um, how there's we could. Association, yeah. Association to do that too. Yeah, there's a lot of small businesses or people are trying to start businesses who, for, for whatever reason, maybe get intimidated or don't know how to navigate our town hall. Um, and it's not difficult, but they do need like guidance at some point, too, which I think that would be another role that this association would play. So who is, who is uh, ahead of your association? We, we haven't even, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're we just haven't done kind that of in yet. the beginning stages. Yeah. Okay. We're just, we're just yeah. it's in talk right now. I think it's an excellent idea. Yeah. And, and to, to the point of town hall, whether it's business or residential, we need to come up with some kind of a chain of events to help people understand what the processes are if I want to build a house or if I want to start a business or whatever. I, mean, I used to be, and probably still am, the go-to person other than town hall for advice on how to do that kind of stuff because I've been doing it for such a long time. I, I know all the rules and regulations and it's kind of, we need one stop shopping in town hall rather than, okay, you got to go to here, 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 here. Oops, you forgot to go there. Now you got to go back and do it all over again. If there's a chain of events written down, I think it would be I think it is helpful. written down somewhere. Well, Jessica, I don't really do you think have? So. Well, we have a good standing. I think 
think some kind of a written document would be really useful if you want to A, B, or C. You need to do this in this order. We're going to create the document and there's about 20 different variations. Exactly. It would have variations. It would be a if this, then that sort of thing. But I think it would be well appreciated and encourage businesses to not be overwhelmed. Well, those, those are the types of things that, yes. you know, again, yeah, our I mean, group could kind of noodle on it, do that off to the side, and then maybe come to the town with a proposal um, on those types of things. And I, and I guess the only other thing I just wanted to say is um, just to comment that Joyce made, that th this is, is not in any way intended to supplant or separate from the Amherst Area Chamber. No. Um, it's kind of think like a concentrated group, you know, focused mm -hmm. on Hadley because again, Amherst has to worry about Amherst and Sunderland and, and Belcher Town, and they well, have different rules. In their in um, their their area is so much different than ours. Yeah, very different. You know, yep. they're not really mm -hmm. what we have to entail on our Route Nine. They have nothing of that nature of what we're dealing right. with. But you know the chamber's been a very good friend in terms of wanting to help with that communication. So again, I think yes. you know we're looking to work with Claudia to, to leverage that because it already exists. So. And Kishore's on the board too. <laughs> but it would be mostly happy centric. Yeah. And most of the issues that you know that I concern myself are regarding happy. What's going on? So. Well, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Especially if it's during construction time, Monday to Friday. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you think that there are other people who would just readily follow you to start this that are already members of the Amherst Chamber? Is is there a core group you can say we can get going? In Hadley. In Hadley. Of um, Hadley people. Not yet. Okay. I can tell you that. I mean, if, if you're talking beyond two or three people. I haven't started mm -hmm. reaching out that hard yet um, until this was established but I know that there's some people who would be interested in it and would like to have that communication well, and we'd like to get kind of a representative sample of different verticals Businesses. you know so yeah. so people from the um, you know the agricultural community you know one group at least somebody from from there in particular always jumps out you know small large so that I think that would be our next step Okay, I'm all in favor. Aye. You don't need a vote from us. That would no. just. No. Can, I, can I ask for a clarification? Yes. Do you see it as a select board appointed council or totally separate? That was asked of me, so I just wanted to clarify. Yep. Have you guys clarified? This is an separate entity that is not part of the board. Okay. Yep. Thank you. you would just come to us with concerns or whatever after you set up your yeah. your, your yeah. committee or and feedback whatnot. Or yeah. yeah, and there would be a contact person for us to say, hey, this is coming down the pike. You know, we want you to be aware of such and such. Yes. Yeah. And that, in all likelihood, would, would be me at least to start. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, in terms of the liaison, if you will, from the board um, mm -hmm. to the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. So, right. Yeah. Good luck. Great. Thank you. Yes. Thanks Thank for coming. Get your lasso out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm sure there's a lot of, of people that are interested in hopefully seeing this tonight might perk some interest. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. If not, you go banging on their doors. I've done that in the past. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You. Thank you very much. All right. Now we'll go back to public comments. Are there any public comments tonight? Anyone in the audience? Raise your hand. There's definitely. I know there is. Chris is here. Okay, Chris, unmute yourself, please. Chris who? Sibley. Sibley. Hi there. Um, my name is Christina Sibley. This is my husband, John. We are at 3 Birch Meadow Drive, and we um, joined into the planning board meeting last night to bring up the fact that we were hoping to get our road taken over by the town for maintenance. And um, there was a good discussion about what we can do to get that rolling. And we were wondering if there was anything else we should follow with the uh, select board. Um, any suggestions or comments or anything as far as that goes? Well, I think, you know, we can't have that discussion tonight because it's a bigger discussion than what we could talk about. But 
my idea would be that it needs to go first through the DPW and um, see what needs to get done on the end of it of the people that own the development on Birch Meadow um, and then let us know what needs what they need to do. And Scott, you're here. Do you have anything you want to say at the moment? But this isn't shouldn't be up for discussion on comments. Right. This it's should true. be we a dis be right. this should be a right. an agenda. <laughs> we should put it on next one. Sit down, Scott. Scott. Time right. yeah. Am I wrong? <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm just oh, Scott. I'm got sorry. Up. I was like, so, good exercise. Go the procedural aspect of it. Legal has set some guidelines, though. Has and we haven't aspect. seen those yet. Nope. So, so I would like to. Put that off till the next meeting. One thing they asked for suggestions, so I know I, I sent them to you to put a placeholder on the warrant. Has that happened? Yeah. Okay, so that's. That was done last week. Okay, to so after that, then we just got to follow the procedures to get okay. the vote accepted. Mm -hmm. All right, and put it on for the. Thank you very the, much. We'll be next agenda. We'll on be next week. Two weeks. The eighteenth. Two weeks. Sixteen. Mm -hmm. All right. Four thank you. Thank you. Eighteen. 18. 18. Yeah. Any other public comments? Consent agenda. We have warrants AP 2325, AP 2326, AP 23265, AP 23265. Those two are the same. AP 2327, AP 2327V. Right. 23265. Right. They're right here. They're here. Okay. AP 23265, you have? Yes. Yep. Twice. Okay, so you have AP 232. Yes. AP two three two six. Yes. AP two three two six five. Yes. AP two three two seven V. AP two three two seven. Okay, we just have one of them listed twice. Yeah. Okay. So, My apologies. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please, Jennifer. Roll call vote. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Parsons? Yes. <laughs> Iser? Yes. And Keegan? Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, new business, the recycle grant. And I see that uh, Kathy Nelson is here. Kathy? Yeah. Hi. Okay, yeah. So I'm here to report to you guys about the um, recycling dividends program grant that um, I've applied for for the town uh, two years in a row now. So far, we've I don't Carolyn, have we gotten this year's? Uh, I know we were awarded fourteen ten. Have we actually received the money yet? Do you know? I can check on that, Kathy. Okay. All right. So so far, we've received um, twenty one hundred dollars. From this program. The way it works is um, it's through Massachusetts uh, Department of Environmental Protection and basically this, it's a program to encourage municipalities to do all sorts of recycling related things and um, the way the money that you receive is determined uh, based on the different criteria you accumulate points for different items and um and that's how the and based on the population of the town or the actually the number of people served by the municipal solid waste program which for us is our transfer station so so far uh we've received twenty one hundred dollars um it, i guess you have the record in front of you um 
1,540 of that we have used to purchase earth machine backyard compost bins. Um, we're, we're buying them from Northampton DPW 10 at a time for $54 and 60 cents a piece, which is a really good price. They're like well over a hundred dollars retail. And then we've, one of the ways that we got points, we got two points because we are selling them to Hadley residents for $25 a piece. So, so far we've purchased 25 bins from Northampton and sold 20 of them. And um, that's about it. <laughs> uh, that's what we're doing with the money. Um, there's some discussion, uh, somebody on the Hadley Climate Change Committee, well, the committee is, we're working on a compost promotion program in the town. Catalina is the, person who brought this up and she's applied for some grant money from the cultural council to have someone design and make a big banner that she wants us to put up at the transfer station which I think is a great idea anything we can do to promote composting um, we don't know yet if the, the cultural council is going to give her the grant money that she applied for if they don't then maybe we can use some of this grant money for that banner. I don't, you know, that's a kind of wait and see. I like having it for these compost bins because they're selling pretty much as soon as we get, we just got 10 more. When was it? About two weeks ago. And I've already sold five of them. So they're probably going to go pretty fast. Um, eventually, I think it would be nice if we could set up our own account with this, the company that, Northampton gets them from, but so far we've had trouble. They don't call us back. <laughs> we've tried to set up an account with them, but we've had trouble doing that. So for now, we're just buying them 10 at a time from Northampton. When they place an order, they do it for 20 and we get 10 and they get 10. Any questions? No, no good work. Great. Thanks yeah. for what you're doing, Kathy. You okay, you're welcome. All right, Jessica, you're up. <laughs> Early voting, opt out or opt in. Okay. So in-person early voting started back in 2016. It was really successful. People loved it, but it was pretty much only in person. Obviously COVID hit, we all got whacked with that one. So the state expanded it to by mail as well. So the, Co the um, Voters Act has changed everything now where um, the Select board has to vote in, I'm sorry, they have to go opt, they have to opt out of early voting by mail, but you have to opt in to early voting in person, which kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's what they're making us do. And the elections I'm talking to you about today are not the state and federal elections, because initially only state and federal elections, you could do the in-person voting, but the state is expanding it to all elections. So we are in town election and our special elections. So that's the only thing I'm speaking of. And every time you make this vote, it has to be done for each particular election. You can't do a blanket and say, okay, we're gonna do it this way the whole time. So I'm gonna have to come, you guys are gonna have to re-vote on this for every election that we have. And that's town and local. Is, would a ballot vote be considered an election or is that separate? No, that'd be an election. Be that would be, so, so if, if we have a finance issue that is. Uh, but a ballot one, we they never can do a write-in or an absentee ballot, can they? For every election. Well, they, can do an absentee, they can do an absentee There's ballot. Meeting, obviously not. Okay. There's always an absentee. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so your request. So my registrars recommend, again, the select board vote out of early voting by mail. And the reasons I have for that is the initial time it takes to process all the packets, the tracking of the packets, the separation of the ballots, um, the cost it takes to mail the ballots, receiving them back in, what was really frustrating to me, um, especially during the primary, is I think we sent out over a thousand ballots and we got maybe 600 back. So I just think that's wasteful as far as time and money that we're paying people to do that. Um, the reason why I want to do the opt-in for early voting in person is because it worked so well the first two years pre-COVID. Now we're going back to the world, you know, kind of post-COVID, trying to get things back to normal. And we're not like the state and we're not gonna send every single resident 
an early vote map application, because I get inundated with those and the state sent those out. We're not going to do that as a town. So I think that people would appreciate me having the hours open during town hall for them to vote and do it for like 17 days before the election. Hmm. So we'd still have early voting. And uh, absentee voting is not affected by any of this. Absentee voting will stay as it is. Just what about um, people who are in like nursing homes and who they don't want to come in? They have to go absentee. They have to go absentee. Mm -hmm. The only difference is early voting, you don't need a reason at all. Absentee voting, you're going to be out of town, you have a disability, or you just lose. I'll make a motion to accept opt out. I'll, I'll second for discussion, but I have some questions from a, a, constitu a constituent. All right. Okay, so it's about the mail-in voting part of it. Uh, given the current rise in COVID, RSV flu, keep mail in so that people don't have to come into town hall, let alone the clerk's cramped office. And these are just things that were written to me via email. As Molly said, what about people combined to nursing homes or others with mobility issues? What if you're out of town? So you've got that with the absentee ballot and the same thing with the uh, nursing home or mobility issues. The state allowed COVID as a need to apply for an absentee ballot. Okay, okay. So. To apply, do they have to come in person to your office? In person, early voting, no application, they come in and vote, that's it. If absentee it's by mail. By mail. For early voting and absentee, they have to submit an application. For early voting, it's every single election, whereas an absentee ballot can cover all the elections. So, if somebody doesn't want to come into your office, there's a form online they can get and send to you. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, there's one last question or a multitude of questions that relate to one issue. Who are the Board of Registrars? Are their meetings taped by Hadley Media? Are they a public entity? Was there Six. discussion of this change public and is it available to be posted on Hadley Media? So the only meetings with the registrars I have is after elections to certify you have a vote and all of that. Um, a few of my um, registrars were been out of town, um, but I can give you the list and the names if you like. Okay. Uh, and but, and their meetings obviously aren't taped by Hadley Media. No, they just have uh, minutes. Okay, so and you again that's after state elections, and the only other time we meet is if there was a question about somebody's residency, and thank God we haven't had any of those. Just do you need um, an answer tonight, or if we wanted to, I'm just thinking there might be other people well, who are I'm just finding out. My about recommendation it. is on how I think the election would run most smoothly. Mm -hmm. Um, just doing a thousand extra absentee ba uh, early ballots adds like 130 extra hours mm -hmm. to my office. If you take into account each one to process is probably seven to ten minutes from start to finish. Um, but again, people forget that we have absentee. We always have absentee. Mm -hmm. That's always a vote by mail option. And you said COVID is a valid yep. reason for that. Mm -hmm. Disability, can't come in. Yeah. I'm just wondering if it, it's good to get the information out and then maybe we could just vote it at the the next meeting just in case there's additional public comment about it. Days prior to the election. When does that? I'm sorry, how many when does the 45 clock? Days. When does the clock run out on that? Okay. So, May third. May fifteenth. Yeah. So, so 40 days end of March. Days prior to that. Okay. So we if we do it vote on it the next meeting. Yes. Then it's we no got problem. Plenty of time for you. I mean, there's still going to be an early voting option. Yeah. 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 Well, I think what Molly said is is valid. That let's see if any if there's anybody that comes out to to really have a concern about this, so that we can talk about it. And, and it may it, just be more educational. Again, like you're saying, reminding people that we're not taking anything away from not, them. Not anything substantial away. Right. 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 And I think a lot of people appreciated the in-person voting in my office, and it's not in my camp office. We have one we set up in the hallway. Well, I think, that, I think the main thing, the difference in terms of the early voting by mail is the saving of the cost. It's, instead of doing a blanket thing, anyone who wishes can do it, but we're not going to send out a blanket ballot to everybody in town. Yes, we're doing it, no, we're not. Right. If you say we're only doing it in right. person, that's what we're talking about. Right. 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 
So with the whole thing with federal and state elections, that they would send us the packets, you know, pretty much pre-made. The only thing we have to add is the ballots. They're not going to do that for our local election. So there's a the time doing that and getting the tracking. Um, when the ballots don't get returned, when there's mistakes made on them, I have to resend a second ballot out. Um, so again, I think a lot of people appreciate the in-person voting more than so if we if we vote on it in two weeks, it's not going to impact anything. And I, I was actually supposed to be on the agenda in two weeks, but I accidentally got put on the agenda. Okay. So. <laughs> well, there you have it. The plan came together. So, but again, that's my recommendation. All okay. right. Okay. Thank you very much. And Thanks, we'll see Jeff. you in two weeks, and you can say it all again. <laughs> I guess I'll take away my motion. Oh, that's right. That's you there's a motion, and, and he seconded, seconded it. So you're going to have to. Oh, so we. Second? I will. I will unsecond my second. Yep. All right. Are you taking yours? Out? I guess so. All right. The hell. Town administrator goal achievements and performance evaluation. So I'm going to re refer you to the documents that there's a lot of documents under this part. Um, Jane has asked me to go over these and read these and add. I want to elaborate a little bit on it, but I'm going to walk you through which document you're going to be opening up. All right. Um, so if you go to the final letter to select board, you know when I put final on all these, it doesn't mean that's what I'm done, but this was my final draft. So the final letter to the select board. Do you see that? Yeah. And I'll read that. Dear select board members, thank you for this opportunity to share with you my achievements to date and goals for 23 and beyond. Some of these goals will cascade into following years due to the complexity of funding and staffing needed to accomplish them. As you are aware, I'm grouping my third year as town administrator. Although this is the first year I've been formally asked to present this information, I did include a copy of my town administrator's letter that was presented in the budget book in February of 2022 which reflects last year's goals in a more general presentation. So you, that is uh, the second document is the um, town administration TA budget letter. So I, I won't go into detail on that, but um, a lot of uh, what was accomplished without a formal presentation of my goals um, is highlighted there that was put in that, that budget book. Since I began in September of 2020, my efforts have focused on Understand the uniqueness of Hadley and adapting my experience in municipal management and financial, financial planning to best serve the town as your administrator. I am thankful for the support I've received from the staff, the residents, and the select board. So now you're going to go to the document that says um, final achievements. How do I go back final to Final administrator that? achievements. September 2020 to December 31st, 2022. And the, the first area um, of focus is town departments. Um, and this is, as you can see, is in bullet form. That I do, that's what, how I do best in explaining things, but I will, when I feel it's necessary, I'll elaborate a little bit more. Um, but my achievement in the, um, with the town departments is identifying unique skill sets and work experience in employees and utilize those assets to benefit operations and efficiency. This approach has maximized potential and enhanced the quality and accuracy of financial reporting and preparation. Worked closely with the former and present DPW director to identify critical program and infrastructure failures, uh, prioritize projects, and identify funding needs and source. And I think if you look at the last two years at our meetings, um, the ability to go out on the field with Scott as he identifies issues, we have worked really well together. Um, to prioritize and bring those that are most critical to town meeting to, for funding. Um, there's also times where we're uh, dealing with um, infrastructure failure or problems that will go out together. And again, even if it's, uh, it's finding a, a source that we need right now to find something to deal with that. Um, directed the practice of a work order system for building maintenance to track workload. There really was any, anything in place to see uh, Gary's workload and what his future needs are going to be. Um, so um, that has been um, put in place so that there's a documentation of how, many, uh, how much uh, work he's getting um, that those uh, 
how many calls he's getting to respond. Um, I work closely with the Board of Health to transition from outsourcing health inspections to hiring a health inspector. Um, some of you know that um, when I first started, we were outsourcing for health inspections, and we only did about, that was only for about 100 inspections a year. As you know, we do a lot more than that, and right now we have um, a really good um, health inspector as an employee, and we'll be, one of my goals will be to increase in that as well. Um, assisted in the final launch of the permitting software for the Board of Health. Assisted the Conservation Commission in hiring, agent, uh, hiring an agent. Uh, but you will see, Shia will be reti retiring. Um, assisted the ZBA to help clarify responsibilities and guidelines for meetings and to research educational resources. And um, there was a whole period of time when I first got here of locating the offices to make it more accessible for the public, moving buildings downstairs, uh, moving the town administrator and uh, uh, inspections. Uh, uh, Jennifer's position upstairs, a little bit more privacy for the town administrator, not right there as you walked in. Um, human resources and labor relations. Um, I, I have an open door policy for all employees, no matter whether it's department heads or staff. Uh, regular presence in the buildings outside of the town hall. Um, I've initiated progressive discipline and successfully facilitated two uh, department heads separation agreements that took a great deal of work in, um, and I, I felt those just that worked, that worked really well for the town as well as for the employee. Negotiate the transition of hiring and promotion and promotion to fill those management vacancies. Um, I think one of the things that has been um, a concern of mine is identifying points of failures with different departments. So I, I, I use this example, you know, if one of our department heads won $5 million and decided to walk off the job tomorrow, we, have, we truly have points of failure when they're not here, when they're out on sick time. So if you see in my budget request the past couple of years, it's trying to get more support staff in there so that when someone's a, a critical management position is out, someone can step in and do some of those tasks. Um, and I'm, I'm continuing to encourage all departments to cross-train when possible. Um, I, always trying to reach out to area towns to research interest in sharing part-time positions. I tried that with accounting um, when we were looking at um, hiring somebody in-house versus um, having outsourcing accounting. And then conservation, when we had that sudden departure, uh, I reached out to other towns who were also had part-time conservations and trying to combine those, which we will continue to do now that we will be into a resignation. Um, and with the assistance of the HR manager, negotiated three collective bargaining contracts in a relatively short period of time. Um, directed the HR manager to submit a grant application for a compensation classification and succession plan. Funding was approved. We developed the RF, RF, RFQ and advertised, and we have a next step, and then I'll keep you updated on that. Uh, financially, uh, Continue to meet at least bi-weekly with the assessor, the collector, and the treasurer to, view, to review financial statuses of the town, uh, review revenues and expenses to date and other related matters. We meet monthly with the assessor, collector, treasurer, and representative from the Select Board and Finance Committee. Right now that's Molly and Amy. Um, uh, identified in September of 2020 when I first got here, um, learning uh, the financial aspect of the town as well as the projects that were in place, um, just to ident we identify the unfinished projects that were approved at town meetings, but were never completed. Um, with the research and the reporting provided by the treasurer, we were able to meet with the departments and boards responsible for these projects, and as a result, the treasurer was able to release, reallocate, and appropriate, reappropriate these funds. Um, one of the things I have done the past two years is I sit with each uh, department head as we go over the budget, and we're trying to make it simpler, eliminate, eliminate redundant line items in the budget that were unclear or confusing, and streamline similar expenses into one line item. Um, I've initiated an audit of all office equipment throughout the towns to see if leasing is more cost effective, which I do think it is, that is beginning short soon. I uh, created a capital improvement plan working group. Um, I've asked the treasurer, a representative of the select board, capital planning committee, and the finance committee to assist me in creating a five-year capital improvement plan to 
to present to the capital planning committee and to the select board that that long-term plan is critical with bond rating um, and with the financial stability of the town and planning. Directed the DPW to create a purchase order system to eliminate unpaid invoices at the end of the fiscal year with the intent of at the, um, eliminating that um, at special town meeting in the fall, having to pay those um, prior year balances. And I think we're really making progress with that. Um, and I also monitor on a monthly basis all the departmental expenses, not in a uh, um, uh, micromanagement way, but to be able to flag line items throughout the year to correct accounting or departmental posting errors. Uh, with the town meeting, um, I sim simplified the warrant so it's easier to read if you remember there was multiple um, different versions of it and um, reached out to everyone who uses that warrant as a working document to make sure it was, um, I didn't simplify it too much, um, but I think it's eliminated some confusion with the multiple copies. And I think you'll all know how successful um, the special town meeting was in producing PowerPoint to the department heads and the support staff to use at town meeting to present needs and requests visually <coughs> to provide a tool for the treasurer to present her debt and funding analysis and plan to the voters, which was extremely, extremely helpful. Um, the ribbon cutting event, um, which I coordinated and provided oversight, we um, extremely well attended ribbon cutting event in 2021 for the senior center, the library, and the North Cabin substation. Some of the initiatives um, include the dike levy assessment and maintenance, I took a lead role in securing an engineer in 2021 to complete phase two of the levy analysis and mapping procedures and successfully received town meeting support to phase two. Um, I'm continuing that project, working with the Massachusetts Silver Jackets on the FY23 Headley Flood Risk Management Outreach Project, which will provide the much needed education um, out to the community um, on flood protection. And I continue to work with the engineers to develop a maintenance plan that involves different levels of maintenance with cost estimates and ensured that the basic level of maintenance was funded in FY22 budget. The DPW trailers um, definitely identified the severe deterioration of the administrative and break room trailers, uh, reached out to local legislators and received earmarks to help with that um, renovate those. Uh, we found out replacing them is going to be too expensive and we didn't have enough money. So we're now renovating them and making them a healthier place to work in. And um, confirmed with the treasurer that an article for feasibility studies with other buildings had enough money left over to hire an architect for a feasibility study for the DPW building. And we just finished our second meeting and it was a great committee. And I'm very excited about that. Um, uh, a bylaw committee was formed at the request that I requested from the select board and the streetlight conversion project is now complete and pending the receipt of the incentive from Eversource. Um, business and resident relations, um, this is gonna um, piggyback a little bit on what we were talking about earlier, um, but I do, um, I consistently reply immediately to residents or businesses when there's concerns that come to my attention. Um, I use a team approach with the DPW to meet at residents' homes. It's not uncommon for Scott and I to do that together or at local businesses when issues occur regarding infrastructure or road repairs. And responding quickly, I'm just finding it so important with the mass, um, the mass dot, dot lighting project, as Keith Short mentioned, uh, some of it's just communication. And I, and I can't always solve their problems, but I, I can at least be that intermediate between Baltazar, Mass DOT, and the local businesses. And I, I, they have expressed appreciation, appreciation even though I can't always solve their problems. So I, I do meet on a regular basis with representatives from local businesses, restaurants, and hospitality. And I do make an effort to attend special events in town. Uh, the COA is very good about inviting me to special events, especially 100-year birthday events. Uh, the climate change held a workshop that I attended, uh, Trump Retreat, the Memorial Day Parade, and the 911 Traveling Memorial. And, and whenever a border committee asks me to attend one of the meetings, I do the best I can to do that. I think one of the things that I'm very comfortable with and it's, it has helped is I've developed and maintained a strong relationship with our senator and our state representative and, and the relationship that I had established with the lieutenant governor certainly made uh, a highlight of the ribbon cutting event. So those are my achievements um, and I'd just like to wrap it up with my goals before we move on to Jen. 
Um, my goals for uh, 24, uh, but they will be starting now. This is what I want to start immediately. We do need to update the organizational chart. It's outdated. It is still the organizational chart that was used when we had some elected positions. So I'll be working on that to present to you for approval. And we will be completing the compensation classification succession plan. Uh, we will complete the employee handbook update. It got stalled a little bit on the new, uh, new unions that are forming, so we're looking for guidance from our town council on how to proceed. Um, one of the things I'd really like to do is have uh, department, he department heads. You often see um, DPW, you often see police and fire, but I'd like to bring in the other department heads to update you on what's happening in their departments. I think it would be very helpful for you to see what's happening. Uh, this may seem silly, but I do think that it, it, I would like to try to secure funding to hold some employee uh, recognition, honoring years of service milestones. You have, you have, unlike many other communities, you have people who've been working here for over 30 years, and I think even five year and 10 year is, uh, it's important to recognize that. I'm not sure how to do that, but that I do want you to know that that is a priority for me to recognize those that, those that have invested in having and stayed here. Uh, I would like to reevaluate IT services, custodial, and accounting. Um, I have some suggestions on there on how that might be done with IT, um, and also looking at intermunicipal agreements with other uh, with other towns for accounting um, and either other areas that we need, such as building inspection, where we could use. Uh, more assistance with that. Um, I, I want to look at the pros and cons and present those pros and cons to you regarding in-house versus outsourcing um, and let me be able to make that decision, but I want to get all the information to you. Uh, I would like to, this is, I, I feel like uh, the retirement with our conservation agent is has made this even more critical and something to look at sooner, is to work with conservation planning and ZBA to look at what would be the best position to have in Hatton and Hadley. And I do see the use of a land use coordinator, where I think we should look at that. Um, whether it's a land use coordinator, whether it's a planner, uh, but we, we have a need to have a position to help both of those departments. The boards and committees and volunteers, I, um, I'd like to update the volunteer handbook when new committees are formed. I think it's important that we provide a purpose, a scope of work, and an end date. And definitely work with Jen to do an ethics and open meeting law training to all of the elected and appointed officials. Um, I want to take more of an effort to submit press releases as needed when we have vacancies, not just do it on the, uh, the website, but to actually do articles. Uh, I think hosting a virtual open house for boards and committees to entice new volunteers would be helpful as well as uh, creating a, a citizen's resource guide with descriptions of each board and committee in volunteer roles. Um, I, I put in here a succession plan for the planning board, and I, I, I referred you back to that uh, collaboration to, to work with those three departments. That, that is one of my biggest concerns. Um, there's um, uh, so much knowledge there, and if, if any of those uh, board members won $5 million and left, we'd be in big trouble. I'd go with them. <laughs> uh, I don't know where I go. I will but. continue to support the climate change committee to pursue <laughs> green community designation. Uh, financially, keep uh, trying to definitely a priority <laughs> is to review the water and sewer rates and recommend appropriate adjustments if needed. Uh, if you remember, David Nixon had a state of a uh, Hadley report. I would like to take the time to focus on that and update that. It's very helpful and. Um, absolutely look at other areas for central purchasing. I do think there's cost savings involved in doing that. Um, I want to develop and work with the finance team to develop and prepare a long-term financial forecast for our budgets and uh, revenue. Um, I will continue to manage town finances in a fiscally prudent manner that strikes a proper balance between the funding of important town services and affordability for taxpayers. I would say that is the primary goal of that finance team as well as the finance committee. I, I know it's the select board as well. Um, I do, it's probably on a weekly, sometimes daily basis that I am working with businesses that are impacted by Route 9. And so you will, I know everybody has seen me out there in my vest um, and I will continue to do that. I would like to, uh, 
continue to be a, a sounding board and provide encouragement to businesses regarding the plastic reduction bylaw. IT and technology, I would like to review the IT management operations and investigate the need or potential for staff and shared resources with other entities. Uh, excuse that typo that I just saw. And um, it's really important that we switch the town's domain from .org to .gov and ensure we still have some employees that are using Gmail and things like that. And that's what we should be doing now. Um, I do, would like to in, bring back all of you using a Chromebook. You, I think it's the best for the town if you're using a Chromebook and not your own personal devices. It's tinier. They're not as, you're not going to like them as much as your own laptops, but I do think that's important, so I will be pursuing that. And, Continue to work with Chief Spake and able to finalize the timeline for the completion of the fiber to municipal buildings. Town buildings and space needs and opportunities uh, facilitate, intercede if necessary. I am concerned that we need to get that Goodwin Library off, um, get, get that bid document out and work with the architect to finalize that. Uh, I would like to evaluate present and future space needs for town hall, pursue opportunities within the town hall and other town owned properties that need to be created and figure out um, in the RBC of both and the need for staff that we have to ask in order to put additional staff. Investigate long term opportunities for office and need space, including town owned space or acquiring private real estate, preferably in the town center. Remember, this is additional years, this is not next year. I'm not going to be closing that. Um, this is very dear to my heart. I would like to pursue funding sources to paint the town hall and replace the windows. I, it, it grieves me when I pull into that building and I don't see, see a beautiful white building, that, that gorgeous picture of the 315 year event. So um, that is what I have for you. And um, do you have any questions or any clarifications in anything that I presented? Thank you for what you've done. Too many goals. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of goals. So I, I, yeah. just, I, I can't wait till next year so I can tell you everything that I, that I completed. <laughs> and again, I did say not just next year. Okay. So I have one question. Sure. About the fire. Hiring somebody for the fire department and IT. Is, so do we have best, somebody in mind that has the skill set? <laughs> that's more of an example. Okay. I think there are positions out there that will be being hired that may, newer positions that are coming on that may have that skill set. So I was just kind of planting the seed. To the benefit of the rest of the town, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, and then thank you for, um, there, you've obviously put a lot of work into that going back, mm -hmm. you know, for the, your entire tenure, you know, mm -hmm. with, with everything that you've done. So um, I know that took a lot of a lot of time to put that together too. And, but I, I do want to just kind of uh, leverage off of what Joyce said when she said too many goals. Um, I, I think it, what I envision seeing, um, would be like four, five kind of overarching goals. Um, and typically, you know, you'd look at um, SMART goals or the acronym, right? So um, in the past, what we've done is, I think back to uh, well, David Nixon, um, looking at Chief Mason, um, Chief Spanknabel, where when from, from a performance evaluation standpoint, you know, you've got the basic um, job description duties, you know, it, communication and uh, dependability, all of those types of things. But then we would have like four or five key goals with specific deliverables with, so there was a time frame. So they were specific, they were measurable, um, achievable, whatever the acronym is, I don't remember, but they're, and so, uh, I mean, I'm thinking back to like um, Chief Mason. I remember one of his goals was to um, position the department for accreditation. So we knew what was involved in that. And then he said, okay, by June 30th or whatever, I'm going to move us from here to here. And it was something that was very, you know, tangible. You could, you could see it and he could say, I got it done or I didn't get it done. Um, Chief Spanknable updated all of the SO 
PEAS and whatever the acronym is there, like standard operating procedure. So that was one specific thing. Um, and so I'm wondering if there's a way to take what you've done. Like I hear a lot of um, human resources in there. So is, you know, is, is there a way to kind of boil that down into something that says, you know, by whether it's June of 2024 or December 31st of 2023, <clears throat> this is what I'm gonna have done. Um, on the financial side of it, I'm wondering, I mean, I'm, the piece that's missing for me is a strategic plan. You've got a bunch of elements of a strategic plan in there, and I'm wondering if maybe we could, we could bring that up to, you know, having, um, you know, having, having that pulled together with IT and some of these other things being part of it. Am I making any sense? I'm prattling here. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I kind of agree. I, I kind of, I really like how you've already laid this out. I think there's an element of specificity in here that I can honestly appreciate because you have taken the time to go in, not just create bullet points, but create bullet points within bullet points. Um, so I think in my opinion, this is actually very measurable. Um, and as you said, you're not necessarily um, indicating that these all need to be done within this fiscal year. Um, and I don't know, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we haven't actually um, decided how your evaluations are going to go. Is that right? In about five minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, no, no, that, that's fine. Apologize, the dog. <laughs> um, but I really like this because you've actually set yourself up um, quite a bit in here. And I think that there is a lot to go off of. Um, I don't know if you're, you know, Molly's point, I do understand that there isn't exactly like deadlines or dates, but I also know that your job is, is so, there's just so much going on all the time every day that you can't exactly um, give yourself a, a specific date, if that makes sense. Um, is there anything from what Molly said that you think maybe should be changed? Well, I, I guess I want to listen to everybody's input to help me figure out exactly what the next step that you guys want. I, I think your job is is fluid. So mm -hmm. um, you react and have things to do on a day to day basis. But your yeah. but your your job is like you don't know what's going to come up. And so you kind <coughs> of take the bull by the horns each day. You have a goal of what you want to do each day to start a process on some of these goals, which I can see, but then something else comes up so and, and and that may lead to you doing another goal where you hadn't started yet but it ends up being that so I mean a lot of these things will turn into mm -hmm. that over the next year or whatever that um, they'll get done because as far as I'm concerned you've done a lot in your three years that you've done here and what you've had to do um, and yeah. jumped in on every occasion uh, in getting things done and I appreciate that and I know you're a go-getter and that you do a lot to um, bring things together which shows in what you've accomplished in just a three-year term and matter so you know like I, yeah, I don't I almost don't want you to to put in you know deadlines on each things because you can end up setting yourself up you know for failure that way where to Joyce's point you might do something on your list that had like a later finish date while you're trying to complete something that had an earlier finish date. And I, I don't want us to get so obsessed with dates and timelines that it affects the way you're able to do your job. One of the things that might be useful is you have a huge list. Everybody agrees you're ambitious, if nothing else. Perhaps to prioritize that and say these are really critical to get done for the town sooner than later. Everything needs to there, be done. There's a sub, 
Okay. Yeah. You don't see here. Okay. I do prioritize things. Okay. So that, but, but if you want to, but see sharing that, that might be. Yeah, and it, that does it to. I don't know if Joyce or Amy's. To, to your point, it changes from day to day. It does. Of priorities course. can get switched in mm -hmm. a heartbeat. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I own a, a business that runs similar to the way you, your job, and you go in in the morning and you say, I want to do this, this, and this, and you end up doing that, that, and that because the phone rings or Scott calls or something happens. So I appreciate that there's, it's really hard to nail down when this stuff is exactly going to get done as has been previously said, but because there are so many things, I, I do agree that it would be good for us to see some kind of priority list from you. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Jen, do you want to tell us? And we'll help you plans? with that. Yeah, yeah we're happy. We'll to. help you with your priorities if we have to. I mean, we're more than happy to be there for you to see whatever else you might need for us to do. Yeah. Well, we're, we're here to work together. Yes. Yeah. Right? Thank you. Right. All right, so Jen, you helped put this together. Tell us what you got. I did. So this is actually taken from other towns who have also done these same things. So the kind of the procedure is Carolyn laying out her goals and her kind of self-evaluation of what she's done. But then the next step would be you all filling out the evaluation of her. We attached a copy of one that uh, Carolyn also looked over and thought was fitting. A lot of other towns have used it and pulled it just from the MMA site. So, um, and then kind of gather that feedback. I found a 360 review. We could have some of the different department heads, Scott and Mike, and Mike, and the people that work with Carolyn day to day, get their feedback, then compile it all together, and then meet back. I, and I thought that, I mean, we talked about this evaluation you and I did several months ago about it being important. I mean, we see what you do for us and whatever, but we don't always see. I mean, we have a feeling or we have a gist of what you do with other departments or whatever, but I think it's good for us to know their feedback, and we talked about that too, that that's part of the evaluation process of when you're the administrator of a town and you work with all of the departments, um, it's good to get their feedback. And I, I think that's important too, that we all work together and, and not that they're evaluating you, because they're not. They're just giving us some feedback on how you have responded to them. Well, they're helpful for me. I've done it yeah. in the past with employees. Mm -hmm. it's, it's helpful for, for me, because um, I can't get caught up in, on the day-to-day -day operations. And is there, and if I don't hear from a department for a while, like I purposely went and met with the COA staff to say what's going on. Of all the departments, I, I kind of, I'm, they're, they're, you don't hear from them a lot. And I said, no, we need to hear more from you. And so it, it is important for that, and uh, we're still working on budget uh, 60. And, it, and I tweak it a little bit because I also want to find out what the employee, what are their five-year plans. I, I kind of combine two things at the mm -hmm. same time. So, mm -hmm. that. so a couple questions I had. Um, I mean, the evaluation forms, fine. I mean, they all tend to be pretty similar. Yeah, we, can, we can add or change with little details yeah. if there's something. People want on I'll there. have to come in and get one because I don't have one. No, you can look at mine. Can I have um, yours? So the questions I had um, for the performance evaluation. So what period of time is? That is a good question. Cause yeah, because this refers to like pandemic management, and I'm like, right. I'm kind of hoping it was behind us. I suppose it's still kind of ongoing, but we are I mean, in still pandemic. Well, it's based on the time I was here, which was when I came right in the middle of the pandemic. So. It's probably looking, you guys weren't, you weren't here, Randy weren't here. When I was yeah, no, no, so that's when I saw that. I said, oh, I mean, I, normally we wouldn't be doing a three-year performance three review. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So we can right. focus on more of the recent pet. I well, I think that Molly's asking us to set some parameters because things back then may be totally different than now. So. Well, and I, and I don't feel that when you bring on new members of the board, to have them be able to evaluate the administrator when they haven't actually worked with them. And when we first had this conversation, I didn't feel that Molly or Randy actually had the expertise or whatever of knowing what Carolyn's work had been or what she's done. And, you know, I think in getting to know somebody, you get to see 
the other evaluations that people do and how they've uh, worked with her over the years, and I think that was important for you to read those up on, although, you know, us having been on the board, we at least know what Carolyn has done and how she's worked. Um, so that was one of the reasons I thought the 360 was a good uh, way to evaluate. Yeah, no, 360 is fine. I'm just asking a practical question. Yeah. Are we, are, I mean, so if we're... So what's our I, timeline? I've, I've never seen a three-year performance review for it, thank you. I mean, it's just, like, it's just unusual. So, I mean, I would... Are, are we doing an evaluation now? Are we not doing... I mean, I'm assuming we're going to do something. Yeah. Now, right. Yeah, so, and then the question just kind of the time frame. So, how covers. about January 1st, 2022 mm -hmm. to December 31st, 2023? That's. And it's 2022. Seven months of your time on the board, which is more than half of a year. Mm -hmm. And it's the most current 360 period we have. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Works for me. Okay. Okay. So that How are the other are they done by like fiscal year or are they done by the calendar year? I just wanted to the fiscal year. Yeah, I do a fiscal year or it depends on when their contract was. Which would be it's by October. Because I'll you know negotiate my contract probably within a month or two, right? Right. Or July 4th. So then we can right. kind of get on the contract year. Right. Right. And do it yearly. So it would be actually due like July first? Is that what we're saying? No, I think we're doing the performance review as soon as possible. Right. Soon oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because we want to have it done before we even start talking contract. Okay. Right. So that Carolyn's got feedback and, and we don't directions. want it to run into town meeting preparations. Mm -hmm. We just started. <laughs> and then just the other question on here, it says the select board will establish goals for the upcoming fiscal year. Yeah, a lot of the times had it where you also would come up with a few goals, kind of add or kind of complement. Right her goals because you, know, you want to make sure that what you want getting done is also getting done. Right, so are we, are we doing so that or no? If so, we should have a, a agenda item where we have a conversation of goals we want for the town. I think that would, that would be good because, some, you know, again, some of what Carolyn laid out tonight, you know, um, you know, I mean, I, I, there may be other things like we've talked right. about early on about communication where there's right. some threads of that but other elements that aren't in there right mm -hmm. now that maybe we want to okay. get it on there well, you know do we want that on two weeks agenda or in four weeks for our discussion do we want that in two weeks or four weeks to put on the agenda for the select board to have that discussion yeah, what do we have so far for the next meeting? It seems to be filling up. It's filling up. Yeah, I, I can't imagine we'd be doing it on the 18th, sure. maybe yeah. the one after that. Let's go February, first meeting yeah. in February. Because then it'll be helpful, because now, I mean, because mm -hmm. obviously that was a lot tonight, so then we can take mm -hmm. what Carolyn's already done. And say, yeah, this one's, I really like this one, I want to. Yeah, and again, kind of either condense it or. Right. Mm -hmm. Collaborate with you on them. All right. So on the first February meeting, the select board would like to have a discussion by then, by of their goals. I can update the review to right. kind of pull up some of that pandemic stuff. Okay. That so one of the questions I had was, it looks like department heads are going to be encouraged. At which level? of employee, do you say, no, we don't want your input on this? I mean, ideally, it'd be good to get all levels, you know, because Carolyn does interact with everyone all of the time. So, I mean, the department heads of the focus, that's who she works one-on-one -on -one with the most, and there are a lot of them, but we could also open it up to some others if we wanted to. When I've done it before, it's been a representative sample. It hasn't been like every employee, every employee, no. and, and it hasn't even been every department heads. It's, it's typically the people that you work most closely with. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't say you would do. That would be too many. It's a lot. It's a lot. You yeah. know, you would do with the people that you deal with the most: the DPW, the chiefs, uh, COA. So I, you know, if, yeah. 
I would like an opportunity to have it from each department head. There are some people, some employees that aren't a, a department head. Um, I work closely with Gary on a regular basis. There's, there's positions like that that are really important. There's some staff that I don't have any real contact that wouldn't make sense. But you know, even even in the divisions, the highway and um, water and sewer, there are certain individuals that I work on a regular basis that. But it's your call. Well, and I, and I think most department heads, if they know that you interact with their staff on a regular basis, it kind of behooves them to get the feedback from their yes. staff to say, hey, I'm doing this for Carolyn. You know, do you have any input? Or the option of saying, do you have, do you want to do your own form? And I think we leave that up to Jen to say, wait a minute. Enough yeah, is enough. 75 of them will say enough is enough. Yeah. I don't mind compiling yeah. you know, a few more. So that we have well, I, I, and I think you actually should, you know, be the one to, you know, you have a handle on yeah. um, those things. I think it should really, that's your job. You, you, you can go out and solicit. <laughs> How's that sound? Sounds good. <laughs> I'm not taking your job. You do your job. Uh, the one thing I would say at the bottom of this procedure page, uh, it does say that everything would be considered work products and couldn't be publicly released. Um, that was pulled from other towns, but then Dan actually brought to my attention that in the past you have actually publicized all of your individual ones just for transparency and to make sure that, you know, everything was kind of above board. So I would probably take that. Out. We did it two ways. Um, I went back through my old folders because trying to get the cobwebs off. Um, we did a composite a couple of times where the chair took the individual board members feedback and put it into one scoring grid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's what was public and then there was one year where each board member it all went into board docs individually every every comment that everybody had made we didn't always have board docs I'll say that much since I've been yeah. on the board you know, mm -hmm. paper yeah, and actually the one that was individual was all paper and it, it went into paper. the minutes with their, yeah. 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 Been on too long. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, where so, do we go from here? So, by the February meeting, at that meeting, you'll talk goals, we'll have updated sheets, we'll have a good 360, and probably we'll compile a list of who we're planning on soliciting. You're going to wait a month before you start soliciting? I'd like to already get started. Yeah, get started. It's good. Okay. So, and with the other form, we can start on our own as select board members. So, presumably, we'd have every, all the feedback would be in, in February, in the month of February, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'd like you to have the input from 360 when we're doing that, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, yeah, I think we can keep them up to date, updated. I can even forge the form of the 360 episode. Yep, sounds good. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay. Thank, thank you, Jen. Thank you for paying attention. <laughs> All right. Can we skip to the police so that they can get out of here tonight? Well, we're going pretty quickly. Hadley Housing Authority is... Was moot. that a no? We'll be there in three minutes. Right. Hadley Housing Authority is moot because uh, the governor appointed David Moskins last week. Annual town meeting warrant. We need to vote to open it. Motion to open annual town meeting. Can I have a second? Second. Jen roll call, Jennifer. Roll call, Nevin Smith. Chungaloo. Parsons. Yes. Iser? Keegan? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Shyla's resignation letter. You have all seen. Move to accept. May I have a second? Second. With regrets. With, with regrets, regret. definitely. So with, with regrets, and she has stated in here that she would be willing to work as much as she can to help 
with the changeover or whatever we're going to call DM. it, and do we need to do anything about that? Or I, do, I want you to have that, and if you want to put that in motion, too. So moved. Yeah. So I, I, I talked to her this afternoon or this morning, and she's willing to do whatever she can, so I think we should be willing to allow her to do that. So, and Jane said she, I mean, Joyce said so moved, so I'll second that part of the motion as well. All right. So, roll call vote, Jennifer. Roll call, Nevin Smith. Chungalo. Parsons. Yes. Iser. Yes. And Keegan. Yes. Thank you. Okay, now we will jump to the police employment status change discussion. You got you you have authority over him, so you can make it happen. <laughs> yeah. You're in charge. Thank you for uh, for having me. I will try to be quick. Um, <coughs> so, uh, last meeting I briefed you a little bit about the situation we have with our two full-time officers, brand new officers, um, who are currently on <clears throat> what they call waivers from the MPTC, which is the Mass Municipal Police Training Commission. The What a waiver is, without getting too much into the minutia of this nonsensical <laughs> argument, um, what a waiver is, is it basically is a way for police departments to request the ability to allow officers with the baseline level of training to work as full-time police officers prior to attending a police academy, okay? So basically what they're saying is, is because of exigent circumstances, short staffing, all of these reasons which we have to provide, they are saying these officers are good to go, we will back up the initial training that they've had as trained officers. Now, because of the reform bill, there are now two different ways to become trained as full-time police officers. One of them is the full-time police academy, which both of these individuals were set to go to. Without getting again into the minutia as to why they did not attend the academy, one of them was the medical leave that we've talked about that we don't want to get into again. Um, the other way to become a certified full-time police officer now is what they are calling and what the MPTC has designed as what they call the Bridge Academy. I'm not a huge fan of it, however, they say that when you mix their initial base level training with the Bridge Academy, that is enough according to the new reform bill to suggest that this person is now certified as a police officer. Now, our issue is this. I have one of those officers in that Bridge Academy now. He's attending classes while he's working. Most of it is the, on, the classroom portions are online and then there's three different sections that he has to attend in person. The other officer can't begin attending those trainings until July. July? Somewhere around there. July. The MPTC has told us, this is no good. Your officer's waivers are expired because they were supposed to attend the full-time police academy. It is MPTC policy that those waivers expire. <clears throat> Mitch and I, have both spoken to two different individuals from the training council. I spoke directly with the director of training and Mitch spoke with the deputy chief of training. Both of us apparently made strong enough arguments that they are going to take our arguments and send it to their legal counsel from the state. Essentially what we contended was that the CMR, the actual law, suggests nothing of the sort that the MPTC committee has the right or the ability to revoke a waiver or in any way say that it is expired until it hits the prescribed, within the law, 270 day period. Neither one of those officers' waivers on that 270 days expires for another few months. So at minimum, it just buys us some time. <clears throat> what I am here before 
I'm going to stop explaining that because it gets even more confusing. And I'll probably lose my temper. So um, what I'm here before the board tonight to ask you is this. We have not gotten an answer from their legal department yet. They are likely going to come back and tell us one of two things. One of the things is going to be you've made a strong argument. Your waivers will continue until their regular 270-day expiration. <coughs> we have a whole other speed bump that we're going to try to cross and try to actually extend one of the waivers if they say that, but we're not going to say that too, too loud just yet. Um, or they may come back and say to us, we don't care. This is our policy. We're allowed to make these policies and promulgate these rules. They're expired. If that happens, that means that by the letter of the law, we cannot call these two officers full-time police officers. That is literally the change that we will have to make. They will still be certified in any of their actions on duty as police officers by the same MPTC so long as we call them part-time officers and actually demote them to part-time status. That's how crazy this is. It is literally a title change. They are so new on in their careers that this isn't going to affect their retirement status or anything like that because it's such a short period of time. But we will have to change their status and we will have to change the way that we offer them shifts. They will lose their shifts and ultimately for the first month because of the way the schedule is set up, we'll be okay because we're heavy on staffing. But after that, in the coming months, Technically, those shifts will have to be offered out to our full-time staff first. And then we can give them back to these officers so that they can continue to get their health insurance and be regularly scheduled for their 20 plus hours a week or whatever, the, whatever it says, 20, 20 plus hours a week. So, all of that being said, what I'm asking is this. If the worst case scenario happens and the MPTC comes back and says their waivers are expired, they need to immediately be removed from full-time status and move to part-time status. We can't wait two weeks. If they come back tomorrow and say that, I can't have them working shifts for two weeks. In the event, I mean, goodness knows, this town ain't getting any safer, clearly. So mm -hmm. if something happens and their training gets called into question, that's not something that we want to do. As ridiculous it is, as it is, I would like to have the boards, the board vote and give Carolyn and I permission that if the MPTC says they cannot work as full-time police officers, you must drop them to part-time, that we would have the authority to do that with your assent today in the event that we can't get to another meeting quick enough and put it before you. So that's what I'm asking. So yeah, moved. moved. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> you got it behind me. Amy's got it. Yep. Second. Got second. It. Whatever. Seconds. Any other discussion? God bless you. You can have whatever you want. <laughs> Jennifer, no call. I'm ask for help. <laughs> got it. <laughs> We're doing a roll call vote. Sorry. <laughs> roll call vote. Nevin Smith. Chungalo. Parsons. Yes. Iser. Yes. And Keegan. Yes. Okay, now you can. Thank you. Thank you very now much. Now you can get on your helicopter. Thank you. Obviously, I'll send you an email. <laughs> Good luck, Chief. Fine. Thank you. See what kind and, of lawyer you and, are. And great job yes. being done by our department, too. Thank you yes. very much. All right, Scott. Whoa. Let's right. do the abatement. We did this abatement last time, you may recognize. There was a technical glitch. Glitch. So. I actually don't see it here. Where it's is at the it? 5.59. 5.59, right after. Right after the police status change discussion. Oh, Aliquin. Yeah. Agunquin. All right, so? I, I would recommend granting the abatement uh, due to the fact that we cannot test the meter to prove its accuracy. Uh, and in our previous discussion that 
this is not a normal thing for us to grant a abatement. We usually deny them, but under this circumstance, I would recommend that the abatement be granted. For $51.54? No. $48.55. No. <laughs> if you scroll down, keep scrolling to the last page. So this was, we we did not vote, a, I'm not really sorry. Oh, yeah. You did not vote a specific number, so we needed to get this back on. It's okay. 48 55 $48.55 for the water abatement for Gunquick Drive. Right. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Molly. Jennifer, please. Roll call vote, Evan Smith. Chandler. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Eisner. Yes. And Keegan. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Scott. All right. Jennifer, license renewals. Anything here? Um, you'll notice in board docs, there are two renewals for tonight. One is a common vehicular and one is um, a class two auto dealer. Since there are only two, I did not make a spreadsheet, um, but I would ask you to approve both of those. And then um, hopefully I'll be back in the office before the end of the week and I will get the last of our people rounded up and get them in here for the 18th. Do you need those approved separately because they're two separate categories or just the two together? Um, I believe you could do them together um, if that's okay with y'all since there's just the two of them. I'll make a motion to approve the common VIC license for Inspired by Opportunity, doing business as Wendy's, and the Class 2 auto dealer license for Northwest Auto Sales 2. Second. Okay. Second to Amy, I give it to her. All right, Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call, Nevin Smith. Chandler. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Iser. Yes. And Keegan. Yes. Thank you. All right, and lastly, we have uh, discussed uh, reviewing the fees from the various departments and whether they are covering costs of the departments. And we have um, a lot of schedules here. And is there one compiled of all of these? Or? So these came in a little late and I did have to send a couple back to get some recommendations. So what I would recommend is take a look at these, but I'd really like to get this on one document so it's easier. That would be easier. You know, all right. And I'm still waiting for two more. So well, then we can't look I just at them. I didn't want to take it off, but feel free to take a look, look around okay. when you go on there. But yeah. All right. All right. Thank you to the departments that got those in. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, other items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Can I, just a reminder, I, Molly had asked for uh, a description of the town administrator's role and select board. It's in the, it's in under my section. So yeah, I, I saw that. And is that something that at some point in time we should talk about it? Um, was yeah, and I think it's good to look at it as you look at the, the performance review and what the bylaw says about the town administrator. Um, yeah, but I, it was really hard for me to find anything on the role of the select board in Catholic. So. Yeah, no, yeah, I think that that's, yeah, this was that's what I'll, I've ever seen, the Selectman's Handbook, the MMA. Yeah, right. yeah. So, yeah. We just wing it. We can discuss that at the same time we're looking at our goals and see if we yeah. want to change the goals of the Select Board. Oh, great. After all these years. Thanks. Hey, we yeah. have some great. restrictions due to Master in the Law. Yeah. So that, Shucks. yeah, sorry, just let you know. We can't, <laughs> can't get crazy here. We have some limited, uh, all right, we've already done. Okay. So I had I had one thing I just wanted to bring up quick, which was unexpected, but I just wanted to make a, a comment about the plastic bag ban. Uh, Walmart was a cluster over there. Um, they didn't have bags, they had nothing. People that shopped, they didn't know anything about it when they went into the store. Um, I thought that they could use the bags that are being used in Northampton, which have been in effect in Northampton at Walmart for probably the last probably three years, I think, because they put the ban on plastic in yeah. Northampton probably that many years ago. 
and oh yeah so they have a they have a great plastic bag over there that's reusable for 125 times um but over here they don't they have nothing but those i gotta watch my mouth uh paper bags um which rip yeah which are just disgusting and they're going to just go out and be thrown and now you're going to have paper bags all over the place never mind plastic bags so they're they're no good so just just an fyi to whoever is doing this plastic stuff that it's not working well it's so it's always an adjustment period for people to get used to it and walmart was out of bags long before january 1st because i had several people call me and say i tried to shop at walmart and they had no bags nor did they oh they were out the days after christmas and they but i'm a bargain shopper <laughs> so yeah different so yeah. next monday at seven o'clock at the senior center there will be an open meeting which will also be a zoom meeting where the board of health the climate change committee and yours truly will be here to ask to have people ask questions to explain the law to explain the very specifics of the law and to talk about the form for abatement some smaller businesses who have already purchased their supplies for six months a year whatever and they include things that are forbidden so to speak will be given exemptions if they have documentation we don't want to damage any business larger businesses should have planned ahead that they had no bags at all yeah i find very interesting it's not like they went into the system and just were unprepared yeah stop and shop was fully stocked with paper bags right yeah and ready with yeah. signs up saying starting bring your own bag yeah. mm -hmm. so anyway that meeting will be monday okay. here at seven o'clock for okay. anyone who is interested and please spread the word it's also zoom also on zoom okay perfect that fell right into that didn't it yes <laughs> do you have any announcements for us i do so the ending of um 2022 we certainly did have um more than our share of people passing last year so you know we've had a lot of condolences all of last year and i still have these that will be the ending to last year um, i'm hoping that this year will be a lot healthier for people uh, and we i won't have to read as many so hopefully people will stay healthy and well for this coming year uh, so happy new year to everybody uh, we had the passing last at the end of last year with Irene Paulson, 98 years old, and she was the mother of Connie Michkowski, um, longtime resident of here in Hadley. Uh, Adolph Pipchinski, father of Jane Zaluski and Dennis Pipchinski, and their grandchildren. Uh, so condolences to Adolph's family, and he also came from a very large family he had 12 siblings so there are a multitude of uh relatives here in hadley so condolences to them we had um josephine caustic which was 101 um so long time uh, resident here she was very active you could see her out mowing her lawn um, all the time uh, so condolences to her family um, Charlie Malik passed away, um, a husband of Ellie and daughter Cindy and uh, David, and uh, he was a Legion member and a longtime resident here in Hadley also, so condolences to his family. And uh, that's all I have for, for that. Anybody else have any announcements? Amy, I know that it would be appreciated if you could sign some papers at the select board office. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion Second. by Joyce. Second. Second by Molly. General oh, Lee. wait a minute. Wait. 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 No, I don't know if you can read those yet, though. I could read one. It was um, Alex McCreskey also passed away, and that was in the newspaper so that I can uh, speak to that also. So condolences to the McCreskey family. The other one, no, Amy. Okay. I have a motion in a second to adjourn. Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call the fifth. 
Hello. Hello. There you are. Okay. Roll call vote. Adam Smith. Yes. Kellogg. Yes. Do you know that person? Parson. Yes. Iser. Yes. And Keenan. Yes. Thank you all. All right.